when a person is accused of a crime, especially when he or she is highborn. That person cannot be denied a trial wherein the highest ranking lord or lords in proximity sit judgment. At any point before or during the trial, the accused can request a trial by combat in which the accuser and accused ask the gods to decide the issues between them. Knights, no matter their status of birth, cannot be denied a trial by combat. Highborn women accused of a crime can request a trial by combat as well, although a champion will fight in their stead. Men who are no warriors can also request a champion to fight for them as well. Trial by combat ends when the accuser yields and withdraws the accusations or when one of the fighters die. However, what if the person accusing you is the king himself? While this would seem like an unlikely event, when you look back through the pages of history, there is an instance where a trial by combat was fought between the accused and the king himself. That king was Jaehaerys the Conciliator. While his long reign is often looked back on as the best of the seven kingdoms had ever seen, something King Jaehaerys is not often remembered for is his feat at arms. He did fight wars, and not just on dragonback, but with blade in hand on the front lines, putting his own life at risk. But this aspect of Jaehaerys is often overlooked by his numerous other achievements over his long reign. The root of this issue came from one of King Jaehaerys' willful young daughters, Princess Sarah, who had formed a close friendship with a group containing herself, Lady Alice Turnberry, Lady Perianne Moore, Jorah Mooden, Red Roy Coddington, and Braxton Beesbury. The six of them became inseparable at every event, from feasts to balls. They hunted and hawked together, and once it is said they sailed across Blackwater Bay to Dragonstone. In the year 84 AC, Roy, Jonah and Braxton were found drunk at the Blue Pearl, a notorious brothel in King's Landing, laughing as the King's fool, Tom Turnip, was surrounded by whores. When asked by men of the City Watch, Roy admitted that they thought it would be funny to see the fool do the deed. One of the watchmen overheard Princess Sarah's name being mentioned by the drunken youths. When perry and Alice were questioned about the incident, they revealed that Alice was pregnant outside a wedlock and that Sarah had coerced them into sexual acts with her male favourites. Roy, Jorah and Braxton were then imprisoned and placed in the dungeons. When questioned by the king and good queen Alessanne, Princess Sarah confessed to her parent that she had given her maidenhead to all three of her male favourites, with each of them thinking he was the first. She proposed a solution of redemption by marrying all three of her favourites, like King Maegor Targaryen and his six wives. However, the men mention an association of King Maegor sent the king into a rare outburst of anger and rage. He could not let the actions of his willful daughter and her friends go unpunished, or lords would think him weak. The harshest punishment was reserved for Sir Braxton, since he was the most guilty of the three. Seated on the Iron Throne, Jaehaerys commanded Braxton to have his tongue and nose removed. The king ordered the knight to be gelded and his legs and arms broken, and then healed in such a way to ensure Braxton was crippled for the rest of his life. But despite the king being the accuser, Sir Braxton still had the right to call for trial by combat, which the king consented to. Sir Braxton, being a knight, would fight his own trial, and it was assumed that a knight of the king's guard would represent the king, as is the normal custom in these circumstances. But indeed, the king declared he would face Sir Braxton himself. It is said his hand, his queen, and even his elder sons tried to dissuade the king from his path. But Jaehaerys felt that Braxton's actions were a direct attack on his own honour. There were many who were not sure how this trial would end, and feared for the king. The two men met the next morning at dawn, as the sun rose, in the outer wall of the Red Keep. Heir to Honeyholt, Sir Braxton, was 19 years of age. The king, 49, but still far from an old man yet. Beesbury chose to arm himself with a morning star, thinking that may perhaps the king would be less accustomed to defending himself against that weapon. The king bore Blackfire, the Sword of Kings, the Blade of Aegon the Conqueror. Both men were well armoured and carried wooden shields, emblazoned with the banners of their house. When the combat began, Braxton rushed the king hard, seeking to overwhelm him with the speed and strength of youth, making the spiked ball of his morning star whirl and dance and sing. King Jaehaerys took every blow on his shield, contenting himself with defence, 
or the younger man wore himself out. Soon enough, the time arrived when Braxton Beesbury could scarcely lift his arms, let alone his shield or morning star, and then the king moved to attack. Even the best of mail and armour is hard pressed to turn Valyrian steel away, and Jaehaerys knew where every weak point could be found. Beesbury was bleeding from half a dozen wounds when he finally fell. Jaehaerys kicked his shattered and splintered shield away, opened the visor of his helm, laid Blackfire's sharp edge against Beesbury's eye and drove it deep. Queen Alisan did not attend the door. She told the king she could not bear the thought that he might die. Princess Sarah watched from a window of her cell with her jailer making certain that she could not and did not turn away. Mm -hmm.